So what happens when you combine Google Glass with real-life firefighters? Augmented reality tools for improved training of first responders is a training system that equips first responders with Google Glass to share live video and real-time information during emergency training scenarios. Um, this was a Mozilla Ignite project, and it's also a Mozilla Gigabit Community Fund project that's being piloted with the Bonner Springs Fire Department in Kansas City. Um, so Mike Searle Cantala and Jeremy Cooperstock are here along with Rob Dearden from Bonner Springs to tell us more and to give us an update. Okay. <laughs> so does he want me? Test, 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 talking this, oh, there we go, I'm live. Good morning, everybody, okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is the presentation on augmented reality tools for improved training of first responders. And uh, as was mentioned last year at the US Ignite Summit in Chicago, we showed you our real-time emergency response tools and talked about how with live video from the scene of an incident, we could transform the way in which emergency operation centers deal with rapidly assessing a situation and making informed decisions in response. And this is based on getting live video from the scene where the incident was taking place and directing the individual who was streaming that to turn and acquire the video from the desired vantage point that would help in those decisions. So this year, with the Mozilla Gigabit Community Fund, we've been thinking about how we can combine our real-time emergency response infrastructure with some additions that will allow for improved training of first responders. And we note that there are already a variety of applications that are used by the first response community. For example, the Wiser Hazmat app that can identify an unknown chemical substance based on the symptoms that a victim is, so, is showing. And on the right, the Extricate app that helps firefighters figure out where to cut on a specific, a specific crashed vehicle, for example, with the jaws of life, to extricate a victim who's trapped inside. So these are great tools, but they won't work for firefighters. Why not? Because firefighters need their hands free to work with the tools that they carry with them. So this is where glass comes in. Glass, of course, provides for a heads-up display that provides the visual information when it's needed. And thus we come to the goals of our project, which are to provide for a hands-free heads-up display with information of value to the first responders. For example, the current position, the location of other responders, temperature warnings, text displays, and so forth. And we note that to simulate the actual fire conditions, firefighters will often train either blindfolded or in the dark. So the visual display that augmented reality can display, that can provide through glass, is particularly important and useful for them. So that's the first objective then, is to give them this useful information. The second objective is to have a real-time communication link that will feed the point of view video from the responder in the training scenario to the coordinator who's viewing what that activity taking place, as well as a real-time relay, relay of their position at all times. So there's this constant monitoring of what's, what activity is taking place. And third, we want to have the ability to record that information, both the position and the video, so that this can be facilitating an assessment and debrief uh, session after the training has taken place. So putting all this together, our architecture involves the display, of course, and the camera through glass, a communications relay through the smartphone, 
sensor tags that provide for additional data, for example, IR ther uh, thermometer readings of the temperature of objects in front of the responder, and an indoor positioning system to track the, the location of the responder or the, the trainee at all times. So how would this work in practice? The responder, through gla glass, would have the option of switching between two different views. A heads-up display that uses the augmented reality overlay from Google Glass to give them something like the uh, ambient temperature reading that's provided from one of the thermometers inside the sensor tag, but could also be augmented with display of text data that the coordinator of the training scenario types into a box for display to all the responders who are in this scenario. And in addition, we can mark up an overlay in that space beacons or identifiers to say, here is another responder, because they tend to train in groups. So here you get to know, even in the dark or in the smoke haze, the locations of other responders with you. We can mark exits in the scene, which are, of course, important to know how to evacuate the building safely. And we can mark up locations of hazards or warning of hot temperatures that are too dangerous for the responder to go through. So that's the heads-up display. The overhead view would overlay on a schematic floor plan of the room or the building in which they're training those same sorts of markers, the exit points, the uh, hot temperature reading, the text message from the coordinator, as well as a breadcrumb path that shows the route the fire responder has taken from the entry point to their current location. And that's really valuable because they can turn around and look back to see the route that they need to, to uh, follow to get out safely. And then we mark other locations of uh, the other responders who are training as well, and the temperature beacons, and possibly tags like the victim here who um, needs to be rescued. So as the responder finds that individual, he can tap on glass to indicate this is a spot of importance. Or the coordinator can add beacons as well and say, this is the location we need you to go to to inspect because one of the other responders needs help in that location. The trainer tool looks quite similar, a schematic overlaid with the breadcrumb trails of the different responders, and of course a text window to type in messages that need to be broadcast to the responders being trained, but it also allows building on our real-time uh, emergency response infrastructure for live video feeds from each of those responders. So the coordinator can be monitoring at all times what the view is of each of those responders and their location inside the training space. And this, of course, is important to have recorded as well. So at this point, I'd like to call up our responder. Um, and uh, this is Rob Jordan, our firefighter from Bonner Springs Fire Department. And he's going to put on Google Glass and go through a uh, training scenario in which he follows the designated uh, search pattern that they're trained on. And his task is to identify a potential victim or rescuee, tag that location so that the coordinators know that he's found her, and then make his way safely to the exit and leave. Um, I have been told that glass is misbehaving, so we probably are not going to be ca uh, streamcasting the glass output, but we'll have a uh, video feed for you to see what Rob is doing. And so Rob's going to go into position there and, and get ready. Um, all right, go ahead. And uh, because we don't have an indoor positioning system down here with us, for example, an ultra wideband uh, UB Sense system that we've considered training with, uh, the, the uh, position tracking that we're providing here is purely mock up. So this is uh, not quite a, a live demo, it's a demo plus a little bit of fakery to get the positions in place. So to give you the concept of what's going on. So if we can transition the screens now to the uh, view of the responder. and the video feed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so in the search pattern, you know, typically make sure you're an arm's length away from the wall, check the floor to make sure it's stabilized.
It is important to note that typically I would be blindfolded in this situation, so I'm just kind of simulating that. <laughs> Found the victim tagging that location. <laughs> I know, I love it. <laughs> Moving towards the exit. Now, that entrance, true entranceway is supposed to be blocked. We're supposed to have a building collapse at that location, <laughs> but the, uh, so the boxes have not collapsed, so he's going to pretend that they've collapsed. So I'm looking around for the a marker of a new exit location, and I found that. So even though I know directly where I'm going, I still have to make sure that it's safe to walk there. So he found the second exit, now he's going to come back from the training scenario. So that beacon that's added at the top right corner there, uh, top right, that was up there in the top right corner, was added by the training coordinator, who indicated, okay, you missed the exit spot, this is where you need to come out. And if I can have my screen back up, on um, both would be great. So, Typically, after such a training scenario, there would be a debriefing session in which the coordinator would discuss with the fire responder and identify something that they might have missed. For example, in this case here, Rob, I noticed that when you went around that obstacle there, you saw that there was something blocking your way. You went around the right, but then you turned to the right further and didn't explore behind to see whether there might have been a possible exit point. Yes, that was... Uh I didn't consider looking for an exit at that point. I was looking for the victim, but that is a correct assessment. I should have checked to make sure that there wasn't something else behind there. Right, and that way you could have tagged it, in fact, for other responders who were working with you, and it would have been a useful beacon to have in the location as well. Correct. Thank you, Rob. Okay, so I'm obviously not a fire responder trainer. He is a real fire responder. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. So we have... Uh, the, the, the work that we're doing has uh, been sort of operating uh, at a, a, a gradual pace of getting the pieces of the technology together. We have a lot of the building blocks in place, and we're now integrating the actual uh, indoor positioning system so that we can have the real-time tracking of location, building these tools together. And for early August, we have plans with the Bonner Springs Fire Department to run an actual uh, fire responder training scenario to evaluate the technology and see how it can be used in ongoing workforce development. And I'd like to thank the Mozilla Gigabit uh, Community Fund for giving us the opportunity to uh, in explore this exciting opportunity, and US Ignite for bringing us here, and Mozilla Ignite for having launched the whole process with the initial RTER work that we did two years ago um, through last year. So thank you all for your attention.